Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to find out how to find the B sub n's, the constants right here. And again, remember that when we're given a periodic function, we're supposed to find the Fourier series, which is writing the function in an infinite summation of sines and cosines. And for that, we need to find the a sub 0, the a sub n, and the b sub n. Now, in the previous videos, we already found how to calculate the a sub 0 and the a sub n. Now we're going to see where the equation for the b sub n comes from. The method is exactly the same as we did in the previous video, except this time we want this term to survive, which means instead of multiplying both sides of the equation by the cosine of m omega t, we're going to multiply it times the sine of m omega t in such a way that when we integrate both sides, this term will survive and this term will equal 0. In other words, we're going to multiply the, the left side and the right side of the equation by the sine of m omega t. Notice that we use a different constant, n and m, here. That means m can be any integer, so can n be any integer. All right, when we do that, the left side becomes as follows. We get the f of t times the sine of m omega t is equal to, whoop, and let me leave a little room here, is equal to a sub naught times the sine of m omega t, and then plus the infinite sum from n equals 1 to infinity of, here we get a sub n times the cosine of n omega t times the sine of m omega t, and then that would be plus b sub n times the sine of n omega t times the sine of m omega t. And of course, we want both of these sums, so we can put parentheses around it like this. So we multiply both sides of the equation by the sine of m omega t. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to integrate both sides from 0 to t, one period. So we integrate from 0 to t, of course we need a proper dt here, we're going to integrate this from 0 to t, and we need a proper dt, and we're going to integrate this from 0 to t, we need a dt, and here we're going to integrate this from 0 to t, and we need a dt. Now if you remember the rules from video 3, and if you don't remember them, you may want to go back and take a look at video 3, but there we realize that if we take the integral from 0 to t of the sine of m omega t, that is equal to 0. So this term simply drops out, this becomes 0. And when we integrate from 0 to t of the cosine of n omega t times the sine of m omega t, that drops out as well. This term also becomes 0. And then we realize this term, the sine of n omega t times the sine of m omega t, will not equal zero under one condition is when n and m are equal to one another. In other words, that means that the left side, the integral from zero to t of the original function, remember this is the periodic function of t, times the sine of m omega t dt, will be equal to, well these two are zero, then this is left, will be equal to b sub n times the result of this integral, which happens to be t divided by 2, and that's only true if m equals n. If n doesn't equal m, this term right here will become equal to 0 if n is not equal to m. So for all of the combinations, that also will go to 0. So now that we have this, all we need to do is solve for b sub n. And so b sub n will be equal to multiplying both sides by 2 over t times the left side 0 to t, that's the integral of the original function, times the sine of n omega t dt, and realizing that since m is equal to n, I can replace m over here by the n down here. And so this now will become the equation that allows us to solve for all the b sub n's in the infinite summation of sines, sine functions, which then represent the original f of t, which is in the time domain here, then converted into the frequency domain in, in terms of the Fourier series. But again, it all comes down to finding the a sub zeros, the a sub n's, and the b sub n's, and this is the equation on how to calculate the b sub n's. That's how it's done. 